In our previous tutorial, we have discussed on the basic settings in cloth simulation in Blender. In today's tutorial, we'll learn how to create an interaction between a cloth object and a moving body. Here, we have a curtain which has a fixed location and it is getting impacted by a moving object. If you are new to cloth simulation, it will help if you first watch our foundation level tutorial on cloth physics in Blender, the link is given below in the video description. In this scene, we have a platform or a floor. And we also have our Suzanne which is ready for a movement. Now we need a curtain or a cloth. So let us add a plane into this scene. We'll make it upright by changing its X rotation angle to 90 degrees. Let us also enlarge it in the width and in the height. And we need to also move it up by that same amount, which is 3 in our case. The bottom part of the cloth should just touch the platform. In the next step, we need to subdivide this plane sufficiently before we can add cloth physics. So let us go to the edit mode. Then pick up the loop cut tool and create a loop cut along any one side. Let us change the number of cuts from here, we'll go with 50. And similarly on the other side, we'll go for maybe 30 cuts, I think that should be sufficient. Now, deselect everything and select the vertices at the top row, like this. These vertices are important, they will play a crucial role in our cloth physics. We'll use them to fix the cloth at the top end, otherwise the cloth will simply fall due to gravity. We need to assign them into some vertex group. So go to this object data properties tab and create a new vertex group. Then click on assign. So these vertices will be assigned to this vertex group. You can give it just any name, it does not matter. Let us now go back to the object mode. We are using a vertical cloth in this example. In our next tutorial, we'll drop some items on a horizontal cloth, it'll be interesting. Anyway, let us go to the physics tab and then enable the cloth physics. First, we'll go with all these default settings. But with this, if we simply run the simulation, we'll see that the cloth falls down straight away due to the effect of gravity. That's why we want to pin the cloth at this top end. So go to the cloth physics properties and scroll down below. You'll get a section called shape. Then in this pin group, select the same vertex group that we have just created and which contains the vertices at this top end. Now if we play the simulation, we'll see that the cloth stays in its position, but we want to also have an interaction between these two. So we need to move the monkey, it should pass through the curtain and displace it. Let us go to the object properties, and we need to keyframe its Y location value. This is for frame number 1. Let us then go to frame number 200. We'll now use the move tool to move the monkey to the other end of the platform. Let us directly enter a value of 5 for this, and we need a keyframe as usual. Now we'll run the animation again from the beginning. If you have watched our first tutorial, you know that it will work, the Suzanne will pass through the curtain, without any interaction. And that is because we are yet to attach a collision physics to this Suzanne. So go to the physics tab, and enable the collision physics from here. And remember, even if this object has rigid body properties, you still need to enable the collision physics, otherwise it won't interact with the cloth. And for the cloth, we can ensure a smooth profile for its surface, by adding one, subdivision surface modifier. We'll change the level to 2, and it should go after the cloth modifier. These are already discussed in the first tutorial, so here we are going little fast. If we now run the simulation, this time, the Suzanne should interact with the cloth or the curtain. So this looks quite good, the cloth gets displaced perfectly by the moving object and then it falls back. Now, we can make some more improvements to the scene. For example, we can add a thickness to the curtain. So minimize this, and let us add a solidify modifier. We'll change the offset to zero, and we have to use a very low value for the thickness. And let's say, we also want the lower part of the curtain to rest on the floor, which is technically called a brake puddle. So go to the object properties, and increase the length of the curtain to 3.5. So part of it now goes inside the platform. But initially it should just touch the top surface of this floor. So we have to move it up here, by the same 3.5 units. Now what we'll do with this is, we'll allow the curtain to drop by a small amount, so that the lower part naturally falls and rests on the floor. Let us keyframe its z-value. We'll then go to say frame number 20. Here the z-value should be changed back to 3, and we need a keyframe for this. 
Now select the platform, and then go to the physics tab. We need to enable the collision physics for the platform as well. Let us now run it for the final time. We can see that the lower part of the curtain falls on the floor, and then the Suzen comes in, and the interaction takes place. So this is how we can easily use a cloth object in a scene, and make it interact with other moving bodies. We will take some more examples of different types, in our upcoming tutorials, we'll cover every aspects of cloth physics in Blender. It's really fun, and you can create so many interesting things with cloth, and soft bodies. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.